Have you ever wondered why your backyard frog isn't laying as many eggs as you would hope? You are not alone. Many farmers face this challenge, especially when dealing with local or indigenous chicken breeds. These breeds often overlooked in favor of commercial layers hold a unique potential for egg production, provided they receive the right care and management. But how exactly do you turn a modest laying hen into a prolific egg producer? The secret lies in understanding and catering for the specific needs of these local breeds. Local chickens, otherwise known as indigenous chicken or Kenyaji chicken, as we call them here in Kenya, are animals or birds which are known to be hardy and well adapted to the environment. But when it comes to egg production, they are not the best birds to do that. So these all characteristics are as a result of the genetics, the way they are fed and their management practices. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to share with you practical strategies how you can get more eggs from this indigenous or local birds. These strategies include nutritional strategy, breeding and genetic strategy, housing and environment, health management and stress reduction. And finally, I'll share with you a bonus method which is organic on how you can increase the amount of eggs that they give you. When it comes on how they are fed, there are two things that you have to know how you can give them a balanced diet and how you are going to give them access to water. But first, let us start with balanced diet. When it comes to feeding them, you have to ensure that the feed that you're giving them has energy. Energy is used for maintenance and growth, and this can be sourced from maize and wheat. Also, when it comes to protein, you know, protein has to be around 16 to 18 percent, and this can be from fish meal and soybean meal. And ensure that all the ingredients that you're going to use to make the feed, all the all the feed characteristic, it has to be from high quality ingredients, which are free from mycotoxins. So, in terms of vitamins or minerals, the bird needs vitamin A, D, E, and B12. And also it needs selenium and when it comes to minerals this is one of the most important part because you want to increase the egg production and calcium and phosphorus are very 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 paramount in this you know for us to achieve this goal for example calcium is used to enhance uh, shell, shell eggshell and this is going to make the shell quite strong and also you know we can source this or you can get calcium from oyster shells or lime stones and when it comes to phosphorus this is going to ensure that the chicken has a stable or strong bone health and also eggshell so the amount of phosphorus influences the amount of calcium that will be absorbed so you have to ensure that this ratio of Calcium to phosphorus ratio is very is met, and in normal occasions it is it, it is usually at two is to one. But for this case, we it, it, it is for laying hands, so it will be four is to one, around four is to one ratio. So when it comes to and this, you can give it as a free form. So we are going to just have a bowl whereby we have this oyster shells of. Or limestone and you can give this as a free form also you can break uh, you can have some powdered eggshells which which you have crushed and you can give them to your chicken as a source of calcium as a free form so when it comes to clean water water is very important not just feed clean water is also very important and this water has to be also fresh and you also to give also have to give it at a consistent way so Water helps in digestion, egg production, and ensuring that the overall health of the bird is, is good. And the amount of water consumed is about two or three times the amount of feed intake. So if the bird consumes 150 grams of feed, you are going to give it at least 500 ml of water per day. And more especially, water is very important in during hotter days because of heat stress. So I'm going to show you an example of a feed standard for indigenous chicken and also I'm going to show you an example of feeding feed diet for laying birds. I made the diet and the, and here we go and you're seeing this side of the ingredients, this side of the amount. So yeah and this is 100 kgs for layers indigenous chicken. Yeah this is for layers indigenous chicken specifically. 
So this is the summary of the diet. You are seeing that the CP was CP14, ME25, 33, and then calcium and phosphorus, there yeah, it is 2 is to 1. And, and I was making the diet, I made sure that it meets this criteria for Kenyan birds or indigenous chicken. And this is the recommended amounts. And I made, I made sure that all of these diet ingredients, they met that standard. And if you like me to make your own diet, or either broilers, layers, pigs, you know, local chickens, maybe for chicks, for growers, yeah, contact me using my WhatsApp number that I will attach in the description of this video. Also, yeah, I should make this diet using this Excel, and also if you like to get this Excel, I will also link, you know, I'll also put a link below, and wherever you can go and get it for your own use. The other aspect of ensuring that the bad REM works is breed you know we have to select the best breed and so when you selecting the best breed ensure that the you know that breed is known for larger eggs and better quality eggs this is terms source of of eggshell and also the breed has to be known for good genetics so the breed has to have a good health good temperament and well adapted to the environment most especially for these local birds and also when selecting the breed you have to have long-term goals for the breed are you going to use that chicken breed for breeding other kind you know, for breeding so that you can get more birds at your at your farm and, and or are you going to use that breed for egg production you have to have that long-term perspective of where you want to see your farm going so i'm going to share with you the best chicken breeds for egg production the breeds of local chickens that you can use and the egg production for on island red we are seeing that it, it can raise around 200 to 300 eggs per year and why it is good it is highly productive adaptable and hardy so it can survive in any kind of environment and it is disease resistant leghorn 280 to 320 eggs per year it is flighty and excellent forager so this you can keep for free range farming Kembro, this is a breed found in Kenya, so it raises around 20 to 25 eggs per month and it's a heavy feeder. Uh, so, yeah, that's why it is laying this amount of eggs and then it is disease resistant. So, also we have Sasso. Sasso is, you know, lays around 170 to 171 eggs per year and adapted well to the conditions and it is disease resistant. And Lembo Losta, 20 to 2. 25 eggs per year, fast maturing and midfield. So when you compare this Lembo, Luster and Kenbro, you know, they have the same amount of egg production, but you see that this one, you know, eats more. So this might be a dual purpose bird. So it will feed more and so by the end of the day, you'll get more eggs and the bird will gain weight much more faster. Or we gain weight. So it's a dual purpose bird. Yeah, but for this, yeah, this is a, you know, this is a layer and also for me i would recommend this leghorn it seems to be a good you know seems to be a good uh, layers but according to the data that you have 280 to to, to 320 eggs per year is quite a good you know, it's got a good statistic or data and also for deeper powers i'll do i'll do ken Pro. Yeah, and always ensure that you replace your frog or laying frog every two years. Don't have a frog for almost, you know, as far as I'm seeing, some have frogs that have gone for almost three years. And they're expecting those frogs to give them maximum amount of eggs according to their according to the way they are feeding them. So the other part of it on how to increase egg production, we have optimizing the house and environment. Ensure that the house is comfortable and it has good ventilation. When we talk about comfort, we're saying that the space requirement for per bird is around two to three square feet if you're keeping the bird in inside the coop. And if you want to, you know the bird to be in the run, in the run on the or in free range, at least uh, a square feet of ten to eight square feet per bird is quite good. So and this space requirement to ensure that the bird are healthy and are, you know and you are going to ensure that their welfare is well because when the birds are crowded this is going to trigger stress also the bird will going to have aggression and this will also facilitate disease spread so ensure that the spacing is met so when we talk about ventilation and cleanliness ventilation ensures that the amount or the quality of air 
is very good. This is going to prevent the spread or occurrence of respiratory diseases. And when you talk about cleanliness, cleanliness in the chicken coop is quite good. Ensure that there is no ammonia buildup because of wet litter. And this is going to reduce the risk of respiratory diseases. Ensure that once the litter, if you are keeping them in the coop, once the litter is wet, ensure that you replace that with dry litter. And when you talk about nesting, nesting boxes, because you are talking about rares, we have to ensure that we have nesting boxes. And one box is in one box can be used by three to four hens and this box has to be always clean ensure also it is dark or or placed in a dark place and also the nesting box has to be comfortable you can make it comfortable by including straws or wood shaving as part of the you know as part of the data in the laying box or nesting box the other aspect of optimizing the environment is to by ensuring that you protect the birds or chickens against predators. This can be done by securing the coop or the run and you can do this by fencing or because you can use wire mesh. And some of the preys which eat or attack birds are foxes, lacoons, other birds, for example wild birds and mongoose. And also at night, ensure if you are doing the you know free range chicken farming, so that you secure the birds at night, especially when the dusk approaches. So secure the birds at night, and you can also use automatic coop doors. When it comes to also, you can do regular inspection, check the fences if this, if this, if there has been any attempt by this place to attack you know, the birds, ensure that you check all the vulnerabilities and signs of predator attempts on the fence, either by checking the fence very well and ensure that it's quite strong. Also, when it comes to light management, this is one of the, you know, areas that I think farmers usually miss. Light lighting, ensure that the lighting is at least 14 to 16 hours per day and natural lighting is mostly preferred. When this is not met, when natural lighting is not around 14 to 16 hours per day, you can supplement the lighting using supplemental buds and this can be from LED lights which are known for saving energy and this is most especially for, for shorter days for people who are in the winter. And ensure that the lighting is consistent dot you know if you want to initiate molting ensure that that you will not sh switch off the light suddenly ensure that you have a protocol that you're going to reduce the lighting slowly by gradually by day by day until you reach the amount of hours that you want so avoid sudden changes in light and because this will trigger a lot of stress and the birds will not be able to reduce the amount of egg production that they're giving you. So when it comes to health management, here we are going to have, you know, we are going to check regular regular health. Also, you are going to check about vaccination. When it comes to regular health checks, ensure that you daily you check all the changes if you take. So I'm expecting you to be recording the amount of birds that are, you know, the amount of feed that you're giving them and how much of it they are consuming. Also, in terms of water intake, ensure that you note this and have these records with you also check uh, check on abnormal droppings if the dropping is bloody or or it has you know if also it is if also it is diarrhea check and note that because this can be this can be a sign of a disease also check in terms of respiratory disease if the bird is struggling to breathe this can be a sign that the bird is sick and you should seek veterinary you know veterinary advice also check for lethargy, the lethargy is lack of mood or enthusiasm for the bird. This can be a sign of a disease. Also, check on the changes of egg production or egg shell quality. This can be a sign that the, you know, you know, there's a disease that is approaching your farm. So, be so diligent and engage a veterinarian when you notice any abnormal changes in your bird's health. And this can be checked. This should be checked daily. So in terms, so when it comes to pest control or parasite control, you have worms, and ensure that you deworm your birds every eight weeks. And you can use pumpkin seed, pumpkin seeds, and I used you know. And for this, I made a video. Check on the link. Check the link in the description of this video. Also, there is pests which can affect the birds. So this and this include lice, lice mites, and this can dust using the atomaceous earth and that problem will be gone and also you can check this video for organic remedies 
And once you notice a bird has abnormal characteristics or signs of disease, isolate the bird so that you prevent the spread of the disease. When it comes to vaccination, let me share with you a vaccination schedule that you can use on some of the diseases that are supposed to be vaccinated against. Stress reduction. This can be done by ensuring that you have a consistent routine that you are following in your farm because chickens are creatures of habits. Some of these routines ensuring that you feed ensure that you feed the same at the same time every day. You collect eggs at the same time. You switch on and off light at the same time so that to prevent sudden changes as I've previously discussed. So that you regularly clean the the drink and the feeders at the same time and ensure that they are clean cleaned every day and ensuring that you know the environment is quiet is quiet you know you avoid any sudden loud bangs or, or noises because this will trigger the birds and induce stress in them and that might you know this might affect the uh, chances of reduced egg production so when it comes to handling the birds ensure that you handle them with gentleness and you can offer your proper training and techniques to your farm works or farm hand so that they know how to handle the birds in in a gentle way so let me share with you about record keeping some of the records that you can keep at your farm this includes feed consumption records and this will help you to note how much of the feed is converted into egg production and also you'll know that if the feed your if also you'll know that if the if whether the feed you're feeding your birds is optimal for egg production so that maybe you can change maybe add some things or remove some things this will help you do that also this will help you note changes and this will be a sign of disease because of reduced feed intake also record the egg production rates you know this will help you, help you identify patterns for example if you know if the birds maybe reduce the amount of eggs that they produce you'll note maybe the feed consumption also reduced on that same day and this will be able to help you identify patterns and maybe make it easier to diagnose what is happening to your birds also you can keep records on health and vaccination records health records are going to help the vet or the veterinarian know the history of the birds how you know which disease has affected them on a previous occasion and this will help in treatment or maybe using a different antibiotic so that we reduce chances of antibiotic resistant also vaccination records will help to ensure that you have timely and planned vaccination schedules so that the birds will not succumb to deadly disease which you know which were done we are not done at the correct time because of lack of vaccination records. Have you ever wondered where you can get all the natural products in one book? We created an, a book, an ebook, whereby you can download it straight into your files. So this ebook has several benefits. You're going to get a comprehensive guide of a wide range of natural products or additives for your chicks or chickens or, or layers broilers indigenous chicken these organic products are going to enhance the immunity of your birds so you're going to treat some diseases you're going to enhance the immunity again you're going to improve the production performance that is you're going to get bigger eggs in your layers or your local birds and then you're going to get gain you know, again, your birds are going to gain weight more faster. That is your broilers and also local birds. And also you're going to save a lot of money because you're not going to spend money on buying some drugs, you know, because some of these natural products are very good in treating diseases. Also, the book is in a practical way. It is step by step. So get the ebook through the link in the comments or in the description of this video.